Yeah, and, and obviously with, with Fossa winning the, the All-Ireland Junior Club title, I think there was a sort of a big interest for most of the country probably in a in a junior All-Ireland Club final, maybe more than most because of obviously the Cliffords playing and in particular David Clifford. And I mean, an extraordinary year from him. He obviously hits 11 points in the in the final, wins an All-Ireland with his club now. He obviously won an All-Ireland at the county level last year. I mean, it's been an extraordinary year from uh, from David Clifford's point of view. Yeah, it's been a season like no other for for a, for any kind of a footballer. And I mean, David Clifford is just it's just unreal. And look, the the plaudits keep coming and the awards keep coming, and 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 it's well deserved because you know besides his football side of it, he's he's a gentleman off the field. You you can see him from his interviews there. He's a very assuming young man, um, coming from a from a, a real stock GA family. You know, so I'm delighted for him. And look, I had the pleasure of working for Dave, with David for a couple of years at development squad level and college level with Trilly IT that time. And you look, David Clifford was looking at me the same way he'd be looking at Jack O'Connor. It didn't matter who he'd be listening to. He was always he was always taking little nuggets from everyone. And that's a sign of a very good footballer. And I think it's a sign for young young players out there. You know that you always pick up these little nuggets, no matter who no, no matter who's training you or coaching you. No, and he's one of these guys that just keeps getting better and better. Fingers crossed, injury. You know that he can stay injury free. He's after a long year, um. So probably Jack will probably give him a few weeks off now again. But knowing David himself, he probably won't. He won't want too many weeks off because he'll want to get back into it. He's Kerry captain this year. This 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 year coming, himself and Party will be just raring for road. And I suppose if you if you sit back and look at it, he's played a lot of football. But he's played a lot of football games, Aaron. Whereas, you know, it'd be a different story if you were training, if you were doing a lot of training and playing very little games. Whereas he's he's doing what every young fella wants to do is play games, you know. So his training, his training schedule was probably light enough. But uh, yeah, he's just, look, no matter what you say about him, everything has been said about him. And it's, I think we have, we will see and touch wood that he stays injury free. One of the, the, the greatest GA footballers. That in our life, Tim, that we'll ever see because he has everything on and off the field. Yeah, like, and I suppose you mentioned there, like, about his attitude. I suppose maybe everyone always talking about obviously his skills and abilities, obviously, on the pitch. And as you were saying there, one of the, the greatest Gaelic footballers, you know, of all time. And he's he's not even halfway through his, his playing time yet, which is, which is kind of mental. But as you said there, like, even in his post match interview and um, like his attitude very much sort of. When obviously there was a lot of needle in that game, a lot of red cards, and you know he was he was fairly roughened up throughout the the, the majority of that game. But in the post match interview, like you know he, he had nothing but praise for for the opposition really, and um you know he, he didn't he didn't fall into the trap maybe that I think people maybe wanted him to after a game like that. Yeah, a very a very mature head and, and young shoulders, and like I said, off the field he's just. He's just incredible as well, and it's just he's he's so assuming, you know. He comes across that that the, the, he, that's the way he is, and I think he takes that onto the field as well. And and like he said, I think the interview after the game yesterday summed them up completely. You know, it, it kind of just went, look, it's the heated battle. You know, he 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 wasn't holding any grudges, and he hoped the opposition weren't holding any grudges. And that's David Clifford across 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 the board. And I think, look, we're 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 very fortunate that we're actually seeing this this young fella and what he can do. And you you could see. From even all the Kerry games down here that he was playing, there was there wasn't hundreds of them come to the game. There was thousands. The Munster campaign when they got into the Munster campaign when they went up to Limerick, you know they they had the biggest gate I'd say they ever had. Both to the, for the All Ireland semi final above in Port Leash, they said there was three and a half four thousand people at the junior semi final. You no, know, and there was more people from Leash and different counties wearing different club tops than there was for supporting the two teams that were there. So that just shows that what a kind of um, what a kind of a guy that the GA have that they can market, market him properly. They have they have some guy here. Hundred percent, yeah, absolutely. Like he's a he's a phenomenal talent. Make no question about that. And obviously, the final itself, I mean, was a fairly eventful game. I mean, he had six red cards in total, which I think might be a a record for for an Holler and final. Obviously, both Clifford's getting getting sent off as well. Um. You know, it's certainly a very intriguing game, very entertaining, I suppose, from a neutral perspective. It was very entertaining because it was it was up and down the field compared to the second game, the intermediate. I suppose you could see the difference between junior level and intermediate level. The intermediate was more structured, a lot less of you know silly mistakes really, whereas the junior football they just kind of went at it 
and there was a mistake and next all of a sudden it got out to the end of the field and there was another mistake and uh, it was kind of it was kind of that kind of a game and yeah but in, in fairness to, to the Tyrone boys they, they never gave up you know they, they they kept going but I just thought that maybe that that's that probably tattling in with with party probably was the one that was their kind of the nail in the coffin from because they they lost they lost another they lost another man and I think they were just kind of coming back into it don't know what they have won the game but they were they were there were still only three points in it and I think when when things like that happened you know it kind of upsets the team and it upset them a small bit and look the last few minutes like uh, like David's probably tattle any fellow would probably have done it it was a second yellow card you know he was stopping the play from going on the field again. the time the time was up so he was holding it back uh parties one i suppose he kind of uh, he kind of came on and his speech about this that he couldn't figure out why he was sent off but i suppose if if, if he could see the replay he would probably know why he was sent off all right but look it was a very entertaining game and um you know and just delighted for for Fossa to get to get over the line because there's a lot of very good guys in that Fossa club you know they put a lot of work into it they're probably one of the open coming clubs in, in Kerry and um you know this this is only going to to push him on more